as you can see from the title this video is going to be me giving you my tips on how to keep your house sort of clean and tidy and at a level of sanity especially if you have a child or children i only have one children <laughs> i only have one child so this might go out the window when the other one arrives in a couple of months but we'll just have to see so i'm not claiming to be like a mother extraordinaire super wife person expert on this or anything but i do seem to have a little bit of a handle on the situation and I know from discussions on my online mothers group that it's something a lot of mums kind of struggle with so I thought I would just share the tips that that I use to keep on top of things personally I just feel like when the house is tidy and in order it just helps me to feel well for firstly it helps you enjoy the house that you're living in more it just helps you to feel like on top of things just just nice things flow better without further ado let's get into my tips on how i keep our house running smooth and clean and tidily oh and i will say actually before i get into this um i am a stay-at-home mum i do work from home my son is at home most of the week he usually goes to daycare one day a week which he just started he's only been doing it a few weeks and then had to stop because of the whole coronavirus thing i typically work throughout the three hours when he's napping during the day so i don't use that time to to clean or anything like that um just to give you an idea and my uh, Lindsay is usually working out of the house but he's working from home at the moment so that's just our current situation and like I said, one child, who's two. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so my first tip is to have a designated cleaning day for chores. My day is Friday. The reason I like to do Friday is because um, I feel like it's a nice lead into the weekend. It means that things aren't grotty and disgusting on the weekend. We don't feel like we have to spend our weekends doing chores and cleaning. The other thing is if you ha um, have visitors over on the weekend then you get the cleaning done on Friday and it's it's all done. Pick a day that works for you and to do the, the main chores on that day. So on that day the chores that I'll do are uh, dusting, not like meticulously every single thing but just you know the main services, dusting, vacuuming, mopping, um, a bit more of a detailed clean of the kitchen, um, bathrooms, uh, spray and wipe mirrors if they need it, um, towel wash, um, sheet change I usually do on a different day. But yeah, those are the main things and it takes a few hours to do it. Do I always want to do that? No. Do I enjoy doing it? No, I don't. But I enjoy the clean house feeling that comes afterwards so I just do it. Second tip is if you have children at home to just involve them in the chore process. First benefit is it's an activity. Kids, my, my child's age anyway, enjoy domestic stuff. They enjoy helping. So when I'm cleaning I'll just like give Jed a little cloth or a paper towel or a little sponge to play with and he pretends he's helping to clean. Yes, he does get under my feet and it can be a little bit tricky to clean, but at the same time, I'd rather clean while he's awake than wait until he's asleep and use my like free time or working time to do the cleaning then. The other benefit about involving your kids is that they can see what needs to be done around the house. They're learning how to do it. They're seeing that, you know, it just doesn't happen by magic and you're you're teaching them so that eventually when they're the age where they can help you you can give them their little jobs and they ha might have an idea of how to do it my next tip is with regards to all those jobs that are a bit extra so you've got your chores that you do every week and then you've got those jobs that kind of accumulate that you don't need to do every week so i tackle these in two ways if I am doing the main clean one week and I know that my son's room, for example, hasn't had a proper deep clean for a while, then if I feel so compelled, then I'll do it that day. And that would involve like 
moving his furniture, vacuuming under the furniture, doing the skirting boards, wiping away any marks that have um, appeared on the walls, all of that type of thing that you just don't do on a regular basis. So you can either like pick a room every week or couple of weeks and just do like a deep clean on that room. Another thing that I do is when I notice something around the house that needs doing like the outside windows need washing or something like that or we need to clean the fan blades I put a list on the fridge and I just make a note of those chores and when we have the time to get to it um, over the next couple of weeks or whatever then we just get to those jobs and cross them off rather than you know stopping to do it in that moment which is usually not going to be possible. The next tip is a very simple one and it's just to make your bed every single morning. Such a simple one, really easy to do and I just find that it sets the tone for the day. It just tidies things up, it gets you started on the right track for the day. My next tip is really for the parents who are at home with children and that is to do the washing up, do the dishes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This one took me a while to get on board with or to, to realize, but now that I'm doing it, it's so much better. So before children, if, you, if we like accumulated things to wash up throughout the day that couldn't go in the dishwasher, you could just get away with totally making a tidy little pile of rinsed things next to the sink and do them at the end of the day. But as any parent will know, dishes just accumulate like crazy throughout the day with children. There's like, there's just so much stuff. So if I left it until the very end of the day to, to clean up all that stuff, there would be a mountain of dishes and it would feel disgusting and it would be a lot of work at the end of the day. So now what I do is just after every single meal, take five minutes, not even that, to put through the washing up from those meals. Similar to the bed making thing, it just sets a good tone for keeping things tidy and under control and means that you don't have a catastrophe to deal with at the end of the day. One of my other tips relates to keeping your bathroom clean. So bathroom is one of those annoying ones. Like you clean down your bathroom th thoroughly, the vanity, the mirror in on that cleaning day, but then by the next day, everything seems to be covered in a layer of dust again and there's like hairs appearing and splatters and it's just it just goes to hell very quickly in the bathroom so something that i started doing so i'll do the main cleaning bathroom cleaning and then like most days in the morning i'll just grab a couple of bits of toilet paper i know that's a bit controversial at the moment but this is what i usually do grab a few sheets of toilet paper and then just wipe down the vanity vanity first the sink and then like over the toilet seat and then just flush that it just gets rid of the dust and like cleans it off and makes it look cleaner and nicer because who wants to be brushing their teeth on day six with like dust and little hair and like no so that just helps it to feel more fresh throughout the week just getting back to the weekly clean for a second Another tip is to get yourself a bathroom, like a little cleaning caddy, just a little box with all of your cleaning products, like your surface sprays, your gloves, your paper towels, your sponge, what else, your dusting mitt, whatever you need to do the standard cleaning. Just get it all in a little caddy that you can take with you from room to room. This next tip is to do with organization. A couple of years ago when we were living in a particularly small townhouse with limited storage space, what I did is um, I got some little baskets to compartmentalize things in the bathroom. And I did that because the space was limited and I needed to organize. But it's something that I'll do forever now because what it does is, one, it makes it easier for you to find your stuff. Two, it, it just seems to mean that the bathroom gets out of control way less frequently. So you you don't have to do that, that pull out and clean of it as often. And 
um, yeah, it just helps things to stay clean and tidy. So I, I also do the same thing in our pantry. We've got different containers for different things, like different compartments rather than having it all piled in. I do the same thing with Jed's toys. He's got open shelves, but everything has sort of its designated places rather than it just being in a big jumble. And for clothes, I use like the Marie Kondo method of folding my clothes and Jed's clothes. So basically my point is when you have systems for keeping your things organized through the house, it helps you to put things away in their place and things just get chaotic less often. One other tip I actually picked up from somewhere is um, when you are putting things away to not put the, the, the tip is put it away, don't put it down. So when you're moving a toy, for example, from our bedroom back to Jed's room, go to go to the room and put it where it goes don't just like put it anywhere in that room to deal with later don't put it down put it away little small bonus tip in here is to get yourself a stick vacuum if you don't already we have the dyson animal 8 i think it just makes cleaning up so much easier i will use that thing almost every day i just grab it and quickly do like a run around instead of sweeping i'll just do a run around with the stick vacuum and um it just it just makes things so much quicker and it, it's easy for um the house to feel fresh and clean when you're picking up things off the ground um more frequently than like a once a week vacuum Okay, so the next few tips are going to be about cleaning up at the end of the day because that's when things can kind of go to hell basically at the end of the day. Um, on that though, I will say that before Jed goes down for his nap every day, I do the dishes while he's awake and then I try to do a quick whip around and tidy up of his toys before he goes to bed. If you just let that accumulate till the end of the day, it just turns into chaos and it just doesn't feel very nice to be around i will say though we um the place we're living in is small and jed's playroom is the lounge room so we don't have a designated toy room where he can just go nuts and that's part of the reason why we need to keep on top of everything here anyway so the first tip with regards to the wind down at the end of the night is we do something called pack up time. So about five minutes before dinner's ready, I'll say to Lindsay and Jed, okay, pack up time. And we used to have a little song. Pack away, pack away. Now it's time to pack away. We pack away the things we use into the toy box. Basically, we are teaching Jed that he has to pick up for himself, that he has to tidy up. Do that tidy up before dinner time. And then it's all, it's just, teaching them responsibility for for packing up and putting away but it's also just feels nicer to be eating dinner together when there's less clutter and things all over the place now everyone has a different night routine with their kids something that works for yourself our night routine is as i just mentioned we'll do the pack up time we eat dinner as a family together after dinner Lindsay will take Jed and give him his bath, getting him, him in his PJs. And while he's doing that, I'll clean up the dishes from dinner and get Jed's things ready for bed and, and that type of thing. So what it means is that when we put Jed to bed, then Lindsay and I are free to have our showers and then, then it's free time for us to do whatever we need to do or want to do. And everything's clean and tidy and done rather than sort of at the end of the day us just going oh do you want to do the bath tonight or do you want to do the bath no i'll do the dishes or or like one person going and do the bath and the other one just scrolling on their phone we we have our set things that we need to do and we just get in and do them and yeah i'm really tired by the end of the day and don't feel like doing dishes and cleaning one single more thing but if you just get in and get it done it's so nice to be able to get up the next morning with like a clean kitchen, dishes done, 
that would be my tip just get your nighttime routine in place so that you you can have that fresh start every day and probably my last tip is going to be on how to tackle things when the whole house is chaos like the lounge room's messy the kitchen table has clutter all over it the bench is full of dishes and cleaning stuff you know when you look around and you just go oh my gosh i don't know where to start my tip is going to be to use an acronym which is focus follow one course until successful you can apply this to so many different areas to your life like work and whatever but i also like to apply it to cleaning because what i do when the house is a mess like that is just focus on one area at a time so we finish dinner the kitchen table obviously needs wiping down um, the bench has food prep stuff on it and i need to do the dishes so rather than just being like ah where do i start i focus on the kitchen table first i get that wiped down i get that cleaned up i get that fully completed then I move on to the bench. I get all the stuff off the bench, move it over to the sink area, clean and wipe down and spray down the kitchen bench. And then I just need to focus on the dishes, getting the dishes done. So it's sort of like focusing on one station at a time. So the benefit of that is you're getting the payoff of getting things done, which is motivating. And it just gives you a process and um, it get things get done faster. My very very last tip if you're struggling to clean or tackle an area is to set yourself a timer. This is something I used to do when I was a teenager actually when I had to clean my room and I'd been putting it off and putting it off. I would set my timer for 15 minutes and I would just say right clean for 15 minutes and inevitably within that 15 minutes the job would be done. My battery died. So where was I? I was just saying, um, yeah, set your timer for 15 minutes because that's like a manageable time frame in your head to be able to deal with a mundane task and then just get fully stuck into it. And if you know in your head that you're giving yourself permission to stop cleaning within 15 minutes, you'll find that you can get so much done in that 15 minutes and then the job is done and you can relax and enjoy your nice, clean, tidy space. So that is really the end of all my tips. I hope that you got something out of this. Please, if you liked the video and got something out of it, give the video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit the notification bell as well so that you will know when I put out a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Happy cleaning.